in the previous episode of Tiger Country I took you into the enchanting forests of Kanha National Park and brought you some of the richest biodiversity home to India We spent time with many threatened species and witnessed animal behavior that is often overlooked Now the seasons have changed. It's the peak of summer and the jungles have gone from lush green to a near parched landscape. Despite the scorching temperatures and challenging conditions, life continues to find ways of adapting and emerging. We finally saw the sloth bear with two cubs. This is our last safari. We'll encounter many more species of this benevolent land. Understand what it means to grow up in the wild and what it takes to be a parent here. Whilst we're at it, I'll also bring you the jungle in the dark of night. Stay tuned for the entire video because some of the best natural history moments will favor us on our last safari. Welcome back to the channel. My name is Kenneth Lawrence and this is episode 3 of Tiger Country, a wildlife photography series happening entirely in Madhya Pradesh. In this episode, we'll explore the summer forests of Satpura National Park and get front row seats to some of the most incredible shows on earth. Canon India has sent me the Canon R5. We'll film most of the wildlife sequences in stunning 8K and also capture high resolution stills on its 45 megapixel sensor. Before we begin, special thanks to one of India's leading responsible safari companies, Pagdandi Safaris, for co-producing this series. and hosting me at Denwa Backwater Escape a luxury safari resort overlooking the mesmerizing backwaters of the Denwa River built on 10 acres of lush forest cover the resort offers a multitude of experiences what's even more amazing is the fact that the lodge has preserved the forested estate in its original form giving native wildlife its rightful habitat to flourish in the denwa backwater escape is an absolute paradise for nature lovers and those looking for idyllic getaways joining me this time on safari is my partner in crime akshita she's one of the finest wildlife illustrators out there and her artworks are always accompanied by a wealth of knowledge not only that she's also going to be filming some of the amazing behind the scenes that will be seen throughout the episode we're entering satpura and we're going to the buffer zone our first safari is a night safari and uh, that's going to start uh, shortly It's about 5:30, and uh, it's going to go until about 9. The animals that we can expect here are the sloth bear, the Indian leopard, and the Indian giant squirrel. What my heart is set on, a little selfishly, are all three of them. Um, unfortunately, I only have five safaris, which are three in the day and two in the night. So let's see what we get. and um even if we end up getting one of those three animals um we'll just stick with them and try to get as much behavior as uh, we possibly can 
these rural settings located far away from big cities are our gateway into the wild with the mercury rising upwards of 40 degrees celsius may and june are the hottest months of the year before we entered the buffer zone there was something that caught my attention i'm just reversing up a little bit because i saw an an entire troop of langurs and uh, they are all just sitting down on the ground on the forest floor there are big ones little ones and um, it should make for some really good footage we passed them and then i thought you know what let's just back up and try to get them bus 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 yahan pe yahan pe yeah halka sa aage na halka sa aage bus 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 this troop of langurs mostly consisted of mothers and their young they may be the most common subject but my fascination for life made me want to spend time with the little ones and observe their behavior being on the ground offers respite from the trees the children can take a break from holding on to their mothers and the mothers get time off from carrying the extra weight the forest floor provides a cuisine of its own if mum picks up something and snacks on it the children learn what's edible and what's not monkey see monkey do this young girl is more interested in jumping around and doing handstands than eating her findings well that's another way of playing with your food the older children are allowed a little space to explore on their own whilst the younger ones only feel safe with mom also sharing the vicinity are rhesus macaques they too are foraging for food and have miniatures to look after this little fella is a handful for his mother to manage it's not easy for her to forage and keep an eye on him at the same time if she moves he must hop on and move along with her his young mind however is prone to wandering off every time his mother stays still mom is on the move again but he's just not in the mood to go anywhere unfortunately for him she is too big and he can't stop her she needs all the calories she can get in order to lactate a small smack helps to discipline him foraging on the forest floor requires covering a lot of ground if the boy gets too distracted he'll be separated from his mother hold on tight and never lose sight an important life lesson to learn for a young monkey When they are done eating, the ladies partake in a little grooming, removing ectoparasites from one another, keeps them healthy and reinforces social structures and bonds. You scratch my back, and I'll scratch yours. This agreement reduces tension and aggression between individuals. Cacks have been a little bit skittish, um, but they've settled down now that we've just been parked here for a while. And it's so cool to see langurs and macaques side by side. They're foraging, they're grooming. You see mothers 
you see the children and it's just so amazing and that is what life is all about just absolute carefree freedom <laughs> yeah you see the you see the young ones uh, riding on top of their mother's backs and that's just so awesome We still haven't entered the park as yet. We're far away from the park, and I'm the only car out here that stopped for monkeys. Well, that's what wildlife is. You like all the little ones. You like all the big ones. All this monkeying around cost us almost one hour of safari time. Nevertheless, the excitement was building up. This was our first ever night safari, and there was news of a tigress at a watering hole. On our way to her, we found a young samba deer. one of the favorite meals of the bengal tiger it was still a long drive until the water hole and chances of the tigress still being there were growing slimmer it's going to be pitch dark in a few minutes no sign of sloth bear or the leopard or the, the indian giant squirrel This looks like a river bed here. Completely dried in the summer. Tigers often patrol their territory and could also be on the move to hunt at night. By the time we reached there, the tigress had long gone. We would have seen her had we driven directly to the water hole. This black buck were our last sighting of the night. This is our second safari and we're entering the core through the Madhai gate. We missed a tiger sighting that lasted for 1 hour last evening. Um and we also had news that the tiger tried to hunt wild boar twice. that was a good opportunity uh that just slipped out to showcase a hunt let's see what we get this morning there are there is a tigress with some cubs there's a sloth bear with some cubs as well if there's anything else that's worth stopping we will stop but um i guess we're just going to start going for big game excited for the giant squirrel <laughs> yeah little game <laughs> that's the only little game we are stopping for the the giant squirrel we basically had to get off the car and now we're crossing over the river onto the other side where we'll get another car and um get into the forest This is the Denwa River. During the monsoons, the river fills up completely and you have to take a boat to cross it. During the monsoon, the water level goes up all the way to those uh, trees right up there in the background. This river can be upwards of 50 feet deep in certain places. After we crossed the river, we had to switch cars. Of 
course and this car doesn't have the middle seat taken out so that's going to be challenging because we can't mount the tripod anymore and we're filming 8k video kya tha ha rehne dijiye there's some neel guy there in the background too far to film or photograph but yeah coming back to 8k video without a tripod not the most professional setup but we have a bean bag we've got is on the lens and we have ibis in uh, the r5 body so let's see what we can do in terms of getting smooth cinematic video dheere dheere jana ko dara na hot We're just going to stick to tigers, sloth bears, leopards, and the Indian giant squirrel. Now, whichever one or two of these four species we find, it's going to work out for us. Oh, look at that stock! You see it, Babu? After a ton of driving and following some pug marks, we're out in the grasslands. And there are langurs in the treetop, with their alarm calls just going on non-stop. So all of the alarm calls coming from the trees right over there, and they're looking in this direction. So maybe the tigress with three cubs is somewhere around here. The grass is so tall that it's hard to spot anything. The alarm calls were frantic and continuous. We scanned through the tall grass, but just couldn't spot the cats. We were looking out for stripes in a haystack. We stayed for as long as time permitted, and then we had to exit the park. On our way out, we stumbled upon an Indian giant squirrel. We haven't got any tigers, but we just found our first giant squirrel. I managed to get a few photographs, but then it went up into its nest. This individual was very shy and we barely caught a glimpse of it. And we're just going to wait outside here. If it comes out, well and good. If it doesn't, then I just have to stick to having one record shot. Their breeding season is ongoing and this is one of the nests at the top of the canopy. The squirrel didn't come out. But back at the lodge there was a different type of nest several times smaller This nest shaped like a martini glass and bouncing about in the light breeze is home to a pair of white spotted fantails and three hatchlings These light branches ensure that predators like snakes and monitor lizards cannot come closer The inner diameter of the fantail's nest is approximately 2 inches wide and this particular nest has had consecutive successful breedings for the last 6 years. With three hungry mouths to feed, the mother leaves the chicks to go catch insects whilst the father arrives with some. Thank you. 
mom and dad both share the active responsibility of feeding their young and will catch insects throughout the day It is our second night safari, and we are entering the jungle a little bit early today. Um, it's just about five-ish or so, and yeah, the agenda for this evening is the tiger that we missed yesterday. She was there for a good hour, and hopefully, she is back at the same watering hole, and we get her this evening. We've just reached the. Uh the water body where yesterday's tigress was spotted and i still find it hard to believe that she was there for one entire hour before we managed to reach there were yeah two kingfishers mating far in the distance <laughs> so there were two wild boars on that side she tried to hunt them but failed and if only we let the other animals be and came here we might have been able to get it the tigress didn't show up and we had to move elsewhere our safari time was limited and we had to switch our priority to a different big cat the indian leopard A herd of gore were passing by in search of water. With them are two calves, just a few months old. At this age, the calves are extremely vulnerable. They'd be appetizers for a full-grown tiger. Adult gores can weigh up to 1.5 tons. Any predator would have to go through them first. Samba dio arrive to share a drink. They too have young ones so they stick close to the gore. The night can be very unpredictable. But there is safety in numbers. This reduces the probability of an individual being hunted in a crowd. Alarm calls in a different part of the buffer zone led us directly to a leopard. All we had to do now was follow its movements carefully and hope that it would let us approach closer. In order to narrow the gap, we'd have to turn off our torch and rely solely on the car's low beam headlights. Torch on kar do. To photograph a still image, I used a very slow shutter of 1/5 of a second to capture as much of the limited available light there was. This is the output. A reasonably sharp image with the colors manually restored in post processing. We managed to find one of our target species. All I wanted now was the giant squirrel and the sloth bear with cubs. It didn't matter if we missed out on tigers. 
दिस वॉज आर सेकेंड लास्ट सफारी वी डिसाइडेड टू सेट आउट फॉर बेज आर लक नीडेड टू चेंज सिग्निफिकेंटली इफ वी वर टू साइट वॉट वी केम सो फार फॉर A few Langur mothers with children became a brief distraction. Though I said I wouldn't stop for anything but my target species, the infants were just too enduring to resist. With their locomotor skills and hand-eye coordination getting better with every day, swift agile movement is evolution's gift to them. The higher they climb, the farther they want to jump. Defying gravity can be a lot of fun for a young monkey. To momentarily feel like you're flying. Some day it will help them stay clear of leopards and other potential predators. For now, there is still a lot of experience and wisdom to learn from their elders whilst the children turn every branch into a playground the mothers keep an eye out for signs of danger soon enough we found something else in the neighboring trees for the last 45 minutes um we positioned ourselves under the fig trees here because when we were driving we stumbled upon one indian giant squirrel and then one became two and then two became three the indian giant squirrel that we've been wanting all along was right above us and they weren't shy at all it made sense to put the bears on hold and spend some time here These guys are building their nests at the moment. And right now they're taking a break and they're just having some breakfast. With childbirth around the corner, female giant squirrels fuel up on as many fruits as possible. These cluster figs may not be very delicious, but they're a rich source of vitamins, minerals, and hydration. 81% of these figs is made up of water and let me show you something that is the stuff that they're dropping you can see the teeth marks in there just nibbling away the outer portion of the fruit and getting to the good stuff inside To get a good shot what i'm doing is positioning myself right under one of them um i've noticed that when they pick up a fruit that they like they stop to feed on it and then nothing can disturb them sometimes they've come down the branch closer to me picked up a delicious fruit and just nibbled away with a sharp sense of smell the large rodents can pick out the choicest of fruit endemic to the deciduous forests of peninsular india they are amongst the largest squirrels in the world they will spend the entirety of their lives up in the canopy very rarely descending Undigested seeds dispersed in their fecal matter help to retain an ecological balance. A steady population of giant squirrels is an indicator of a healthy forest. We spent the entire morning with them until it was time to leave the park.
this was our fifth and final safari in Satpura. We had high hopes of seeing the sloth bears and decided to dedicate the complete safari for them. We hadn't the slightest clue that our sightings would be the best that we could expect, bringing us closer to the wild than we ever imagined. The first sighting of the day was an Indian pitta, a small colorful bird endemic to the Indian subcontinent. Akshita and I have never seen one before and we decided to spend a little time with it. This individual was in hunting mode. Jumping at times could potentially scare the little critters out of the fallen leaves and make them easier to catch. We moved on in search of bears. Paw prints led us directly to them. This is the mother I've been wanting to see all along. She was busy tossing around the leaf litter and sucking up insects along the way. Her sense of smell takes her exactly where they are. Her cubs were born last winter and at half a year old, they've become expert insect hunters. They learn many more lessons by observing mum. Termites and ants are a sloth bear staple diet. Eating food that weighs no more than a strand of your fur is not the most enjoyable thing. And finding sufficient quantities of that food requires being on the go almost perpetually. She has to count mostly on her sense of smell because her vision is not very reliable. Sloth bears have poor eyesight. There is no food on the road, of course. She'll have to cross over and continue looking. We finally saw the sloth bear with two cubs. This is our last safari. It's still there somewhere. It was here, it crossed the road and it's gone behind. It was a very short, brief little period. And we're just waiting to find out which direction it's moving in. And the guide says he can still see it somewhere behind in the woods. We'll just pay attention to their movements and uh, try to catch them elsewhere. There's, there's no road going where they're going. So we've got to find a way around it. Almost an hour later, we tracked the bears again. They were far away from the road and were still on the lookout for food. When tracking a bear with cubs, it's important to approach slowly and carefully. Move forward a little bit and then let the animal close in the gap if it wishes to. Whilst the mother is accustomed to walking several kilometers, the cubs do not like walking at all. Riding piggyback on mum is a lot easier. But with the cubs growing bigger, there's only room for one comfortable ride. That's the sound of the twins fighting for space on their mother's back. The mom made peace with the cubs and made them both fit. The dominant cub secures the best spot at the mother's shoulders and the submissive one has no choice but to hold on to the tail end, where it will always keep sliding down from. At 
this age, the twins just want to be pampered. No other species of bear carries their young ones on their backs. They are fortunate to have an extremely patient and understanding mother. When the cubs fall down, she is always there to pick them back up. They'll soon learn that they won't remain small forever. And only at the age of two will they be fully independent of her. As for the next few months, this is how they'll move about. One first class seat and the other economy. After spending a little time with the bears, I wanted to try and photograph them head on. We moved further ahead and waited. The family was going uphill and then they turned towards us. Sloth bears can be active for nearly 14 hours a day and they do not hibernate. Take me back, take me back to the old dirt road where mama Papa used to go Let's sing all them songs from a long time ago Tired from the climb, the mother took a short break. She was absolutely gorgeous and this was the perfect setting to get a frontal shot. Well, let me run through the breeze like the leaves on the trees Let me fly like the leaves when they fall Soon enough, all three of them were on the move again. Sloth bear mothers are known to be extremely elusive and protective when they have cubs. This mother, however, was unbelievably gentle and calm. The submissive cub manages to hop back onto mom once again. But staying up there of course seems to only be temporary. Take me home to rest where the mockingbirds nest. The safari vehicles had one more close sighting before the bears carried on in their search for food. The simple time we lived back when Well let the pull of the plow Bring the sweat from my brow And the glow of the fire pull me home Let me wind down my days In the sweet dusty hay Take me back down the old dirt road Oh, take me back down the old dirt road Take me back down the old dirt road Shortly after, we met another family. These are woolly necked stocks and they are raising two young chicks. We saw them the previous day before exiting the park, but there wasn't much activity inside the nest. This nest has no protection from the scorching sun and both the parents are directly exposed to the blistering temperatures. 
storks amongst some other birds and animals have devised an ingenious strategy to beat the heat. They perform behavioral thermoregulation by excreting on their bare legs every now and then. This method of using fecal matter to cool off is called urohydrosis. The water body besides the nest is an oasis for the stalks. Whilst the parents can grab a drink, the chicks are still too young to fly down there. Their flight feathers aren't fully developed. With mom and dad there to care for them, the chicks get free home delivery. One by one, the parents tank up and regurgitate. The fledglings not only quench their thirst, they also receive cooling showers. Today has turned out to be more than just a fantastic day. Small freshwater fish come pouring after the chicks have hydrated. Each one of them can consume up to 800 grams of food a day. The evolution of the gizzard will aid in digesting every bit of their meal, including the bones they swallow. Yesterday I asked my naturalist how these little chicks in such harsh light and weather conditions get their water. And today I found out firsthand that it's not just through their food, but the parents, they actually go down to that lake over there and then they come back and regurgitate that water and feed both the chicks. Natural history doesn't get better than this. And this is exactly why you have to put prime wildlife on hold, check out the other animals, spend time with them and observe behavior firsthand. Finding out for it live for yourself is just beyond extraordinary. Unlike the sloth pair, both the stock parents share the responsibility of nurturing and raising their young ones. Raising children in the summer is no easy task. The chicks will be fully independent when they're three months old and will slowly explore the boundaries beyond their horizon. Before we conclude the episode, many of you have been asking me about the background music I use. Ever since I started this YouTube channel, Epidemic Sound has been my go-to music library for all of my videos. If you've been following my content for a while, then you know that music plays a key role throughout my narratives. Epidemic Sound has over 30,000 professionally produced tracks and over 90,000 sound effects that you can use across all your projects and they have fresh new tracks added every week. With several genres and moods to choose from, there's music for every kind of creator. Once you find a track or sound effect that you like, you can use the Find Similar button next to it to see other tracks of the same vibe. Even better, I've teamed up with Epidemic Sound to bring you an exclusive offer on their service. 
sign up for the annual personal plan using the link in the description and get 50% off in addition to the free 1 month trial using the coupon code kenneth50 at checkout the best part about epidemic sound is that you can use their music library without getting any claims you can cancel your subscription at any time and still have your uploaded content cleared and monetized forever with so many high quality tracks to choose from the sky's the limit back at the resort i revisited the fantail nest my safaris may have ended but my affair with satpura had only just begun the three chicks were now down to two not all hatchlings survive their nesting stage the two surviving siblings seem stronger and they eagerly wait for their parents to return with supplies survival is a hardwired instinct and the tiny tots are already displaying competition for resources fantails amongst other passerine birds clean the nest of their chicks excreta unlike the stocks fantails defecate in fecal sacs which the parents disperse elsewhere in a few weeks when the chicks become independent fly catchers hunting and fending for themselves the parents might raise a second brood Though we missed out on tiger sightings, we made sure to keep exploring the jungles of Satpura and chance upon the other marvels inhabiting it. The change of seasons plays an important role in generating biodiversity. It has propagated the evolution of extreme physiological adaptations and behaviors in countless organisms such as migration hibernation and breeding patterns while spring and the monsoons are known to nurture life extreme seasons like winter and summer play an equally important role in supporting various species of flora and fauna whose lives depend on it pagdandi safaris the responsible safari company that's co-producing this series with me has been leading the way for sustainable tourism in India. Taking the discussion further than the basics, all of Pagdandi's lodges are located in remote locations away from the regular tourism hubs. This helps ensure that the benefit of ecotourism is distributed afar. Traditionally, safaris were only conducted during daylight hours. But in recent years, the forest department has allowed limited safaris within the buffer zones which operate for a few hours post sundown. Experiencing night safaris entails a high level of ethical consideration. With minimal artificial lighting, tourists could witness lesser known behavior of their favorite species or even chance upon a species that is yet to be discovered. More importantly, night safaris help the forest department keep a check on animal movement and they also discourage unpleasant activities like poaching. If you enjoyed this video then give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more. Your support will help me continue to tell stories of the wild and connect more people with the natural world. I'll see you in Bandavgarh National Park in episode 4.